Hope is the most tenacious of human traits. It is that inordinate ability to see the world not as it is, but as it could be. It is the belief that despite everything around you pointing to the contrary, you can still defy those odds. Europe is nothing if not a lesson in hope. And its history is littered with stories of odds-defying dreamers. Take Altiero Spinelli and Ernesto Rossi, hailed today as the founding fathers of the European Union, but at one point in time, they were just two young men, locked up for 10 years by a fascist regime in a prison on the Isle of Ventotene, armed with nothing but a pen. But in that darkness, they dreamt of light, their manifesto for a free and united Europe paved the way for a peace spanning seven decades and to an enlarged union of high 500 million citizens living in freedom in one of the world's most prosperous economies. Ever since that moment, and against all odds, the European continent has continuously advanced in one direction – unity. It is stories like this that make me a convinced European. And it's why I have dedicated the last 35 years of my life to that European vocation. I started working for the European Union back in 1990. I recognize that none of you were even born yet at that time, but I can tell you it was quite a different Europe to the one you inherited today. It was one year after the fall of the Berlin Wall, a time when the plans for the Euro were still being laid down. It was also the time where we were only just opening our borders to the free movement of people, goods and services, creating a single market for a single continent. And soon after, it was time for reunification. In 2004, we welcomed 10 new countries into the Union, most of them from Central and Eastern Europe, the biggest enlargement so far, and only just 14 years after the fall of the Iron Curtain. Who could have believed it? The Eastern Bloc went from living in an oppressive dictatorship to being part of a vibrant democracy and a prosperous economy. Against all odds, Europe was finally reunited. Then came a new challenge. After many years of economic prosperity, an unprecedented economic shock wave reached our shores from the United States. It was the time of the Euro crisis. Very quickly, the Euro area was in peril, and one after another, countries were subject to painful economic adjustment programs. Words like Troika, bailout, Grexit became part of our daily lives. And the dangers of a sovereign debt default shook the European Union to its core. It was a time of extreme tension, and few believed the Euro would make it out unharmed. This was a dark passage of Europe's history that I will personally will not forget easily. July 2015, the Greek people voted in a referendum to reject the conditions of the bailout, the infamous OHI. Then Greece teetered on the edge of economic collapse and there was a race against time to negotiate a new bailout agreement. And despite the EU commitment to the Euro, for the first time ever, plans had to be made to deal with the fallout if no deal could be reached. At the time, I was the Commission Chief Spokesman, and I knew that either way, I would be standing on a podium the very next day and having to explain to the press and to the world what had come to pass. These were long and sleepless nights 
that I will remember starkly. But at the end, Europe came out strong and united. And the reason is the one I have just explained. Hope dies last. I'm a Greek, but I'm also European. And at no point could I bring myself to believe that the fate of Greece, the European Union and the Euro could take such a drastic turn. And thanks to the tenacity of an incredible bunch of resilient people who worked for Europe for unity, we succeeded in making the right decisions. The second time I felt like that in my long career in European politics came more recently, during the pandemic. Overnight, we went back decades. Border checks were introduced, schools were closed, curfews put in place. The pandemic was increasingly, increasingly pushing our member states into isolation and the dangers of turning our backs on each other became apparent. In those first few difficult weeks, every newspaper headline wrote that Europe is failing, pointing to a lack of coordination and lamenting an absence of unity. And from a personal perspective, the pandemic was also very real to me, given that I contracted the virus very early and I was hospitalized. I remember lying there in that hospital bed, thankful for the incredible healthcare workers and frontline workers who performed their duties heroically. I was thinking, this has to get better. And again, hope really is a tenacious thing. We knew that we would pull this through. And we knew that Europe would do that. So the EU worked tirelessly rolling out the largest vaccination program in the world, with the Commission negotiating the purchase of vaccines for all Europeans, regardless of the income uh, and geographical uh, uh, point of residence. We designed and implemented in record time a common digital certificate that allowed us to reopen our borders, a certificate that has now become a global standard with more than 60 countries requesting to join the EU system. And disproving of all the prophets of doom and the Cassandras, Europe again became the beating heart of world solidarity. Hospitals welcomed and treated patients from across borders. Our member states teamed up to purchase medical equipment. Mobile health teams were dispatched to answer the most urgent needs and over half a million stranded EU citizens were repatriated from beyond the EU borders. And public and private investment at European and national levels was also mobilized to find a vaccine for everyone across the world. Once again, against all odds, Europe persevered. These are just two personal experiences as I have lived them. But I hope you will agree with me that they translate some of the essence of what makes up the European Union. The dream child of two Italians in a prison cell as a war raged around them, that unity might one day prevail over discord and hatred. 60 years later, when our continent is once again confronted with the brutality of a war on its soil, that tenacious streak of hope that gave birth to the European Union in the first place is once again blazing bright. When Putin invaded Ukraine, he did so with the conviction that the European unity would come apart at the seams within a matter of weeks. And yet, we are proving every single day, for a year now, that he was simply wrong. We Europeans have closed ranks and showed that we lead the world through our values and not through force. 
We have stood by Ukraine, not just with words, but also with weapons. And so, before I wish you the best of luck with your conference today, allow me to impart just one lesson I think we can all take from this formidable European journey. When someone tells you there is no hope, when the odds seem stacked against you, be it in your personal life or your professional life, prove them wrong. Remember that despair and destruction will never be a match for hope. And just as Europe today remains a beacon of light and freedom in a world that is getting darker, I would challenge you all, in whatever you do, to be precisely the people that light candles instead of cursing the darkness. Be the people that dare to hope.